Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Western Alliance medium tank, the M60 in Era 2. Now this is the first tank in the M1A2 Abrams line of Era 2. So obviously it goes the M60, M60, A1, M60, A3 or you can go to the M60, A2 to go to the M60, A3. You know, either way. So this is the first one. This is the Entry Era 2 tank and it's alright. It's just, I feel, when I was playing it, like I am super outgunned and just out-armoured and pain at times with it. The mobility is only pretty decent. The penetration is great, 421 on the standard, and the premium is 330, but it's heat, so it's pointless. Although, these days, actually, with the Wolverine, the premium Swedish tank destroyer coming in, heat might be a good thing to take because... You won't be able to overmatch it with the AP or the standard round on this tank. So you might want to take the heat so that you can go through it with heat because of normalization and all that sort of stuff. It, it, it will just go through the Swedish tank destroyer and it will save you those awkward ricochets or trying to just aim for the cupola. But for the most part, the heat's pointless, so I don't take it. Although, the one thing that was nice and is really useful for this tank is 250 HE pen for 590 alpha. That is fantastic for going through some of the light tanks that run around and also facing off against some of the leopards and a lot of the leopards that were flying about. It means that you can up your DPM a hell of a lot firing at them. Also firing at stuff like Magax and other M60s, you can go through them with the HE as well. As you see, we're loading one for the back end of that guy. You do a lot of module damage with the HE. The HE is great. And, yeah, the gun handling is pretty decent as well, to be fair to it. And, with, like I said, the penetration being so good at 421, that means you're not really going to struggle too much with things like the FV4211s that are prevalent in this era. So, that that's definitely nice. I just felt like with this tank that the mobility is pretty good and the stock grind's horrible. Just, yeah, the stock grind for this tank is horrific because the gun, man, well, the gun it, with the penetration isn't that great. You 48 km an hour top speed when your stock is just... Ugh. Yeah. So generally when it's fully upgraded, I don't think it's actually that bad. I just don't think you have the hit points compared to a lot of the tanks. Obviously being entry era 2, naturally. And you don't have the armor. It's literally everything just looks at you and auto-pens you. But you can have some pretty damn good games with the tank. And it, like I say, it was, just a, it was a little bit of a boring tank, to be honest for me. And I did feel like I could do stuff in it. It didn't feel like it was a terrible tank. It just I was a little bit bored by it. And... Being entry era, when you're facing off, I got a lot against the, you know, T72 AVs and stuff like the WZ-122, which was quite a few about as well, that would just two-tap you with the rockets and things like that. Pain in the arse. But, yeah, I mean, it was all right. It was all right. I don't, it's just one of those things with this tank, really. So in terms of a crew on the M60, I run the Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Trap Mechanic, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, and Off-Road Driving. Off-Road Driving to make sure that I hit my top speed with the ground resistances being knocked down by it. And again, making this gun as good as possible because in Cold War, really, I just want to make sure that my gun is always as good as possible. And the gun perks will help me with that. In terms of equipment, I do run... Rammer, Vert Stabs, and Ammo Swapper. Ammo Swapper because, like I say, I want to change to these HE rounds because the HE rounds are great, and then when I want to be able to use the AP, I can use the AP. So, yeah. This game on Heilbronn, so far, we've used the HE rounds to really good effect. We're up to 5k damage. <laughs> we've had so many tanks YOLO at us and managed to not kill us yet, which is good for us. I mean, we, to be honest, it's one of those where we probably should have died at some point. We managed to put some shots into this WZ-122. Thankfully, he gets shut down. I was scared that he was going to smack us with the rockets. Even with his standard gun, he probably would have killed us. We managed to shut down the armor dildo, which gets rid of him. Great. Always want to get rid of those things because they're a pain in the ass with how quick they go. And the amount of ricochets you get on them is awful as well. You just... Yeah, they're, they're just well annoying to shoot at. God, can't imagine what they were like when they were overpowered. Now they're pretty balanced. You know, the damage output 
is a little bit of a struggle with them, but their ability to spot, their ability to run and gun is still fantastic. And like I said, they just pull off those really weird ricochets as well, which is really frustrating when you're shooting at them, especially when they're doing 100k and you're struggling to hit them anyway, and that one shot you do hit them with ricochets. Pain. So we managed to use True Vision to our advantage there. We managed to get a shot into that guy that was unspotted and finish him off. We were just looking up there, though, because I could see a tank barrel. I'm thinking, is that a tank barrel or is that just fence in the distance? I don't quite know. And as we're moving across to our next destination, which I was hoping to probably get to about C6, I was just keeping my eye on C9 to see if anything gets spotted. Then this Leopard 1 comes down onto our medium tank friend. It's like, okay, let's get a shot straight into the side of that guy's turret. Unfortunately, we take a big hit there from something that is at C9. And there goes Leopard 1A1, which puts us down to a one shot, which just makes it a little bit awkward. We're up to 7.2k, well, 7.3k damage with a bit of assistance. And unfortunately, we just missed that shot on the 1A1. What I want to try and do is get under this Leopard 1A1 and stop getting some shots into him. But mainly, what I want to do is try and get behind the heavy tank and the medium tank that are at B7. Because if I get behind them, I can stop putting shots into them and that will advance my team up that ridge and hopefully they'll come help. But while this Leopard 1A1 isn't looking at us, we switch to HE so that we can slap a big shell into him. And we switch back to APCR now, which I knew wasn't going to kill him, but as soon as he turned sideways on, it was like, you know what, this guy is probably not going to get penned by my HE, so I want to put him down to a one-shot. And that's what we managed to do. We managed to put him down to a one-shot, and now he's at the point, the same point as us, where if we hit him, we'll kill him. If he hits us, we'll kill him. I'm going to use this opportunity to get up this hill and flank behind the medium tank that is currently... At A6, A7, as we see there, he gets spotted. It is an M it's another M60. And I want to be able to do that so I can stop putting shots at him. And hopefully the leopard in this area that we're in now would have to overexpose to be able to get shots at us. We're just using the camera to aim up or down a little bit so that we can try and see over the ridge, see if we can see the leopard. We can't quite see it. So you know what? We're going to try and start slapping some shots at this M60. We load the HE so we can go through his back end. And as you see... 578 the he really ups your dpm on this tank so much it's so useful we try and get a shot into the side of the m6 unfortunately it doesn't go through the leper 1a1 gets spotted it's like okay i'm going to finish this off this m60 so that my friends can come unfortunately we ricochet off the m60's turret and as we're reloading the 1a1 comes and finishes us off but fortunately enough we do finish with the victory four kills 9.7k damage a thousand assistance the ace tanker 1819 base XP. A really great game for the M60, which is your starter era 2 medium tank. I say it's not a bad tank, to be honest with you. It's not a bad tank, especially for a starter era tank, because you've got the stuff that will help you, and that is the pretty decent mobility and the pretty good gun handling with great penetration at 421 for the stock tank. Or should I say for the stock era or for the entry era, it's not a stock. For the entry era tank, because you know, a lot of the tanks tend to be having like what 370 pen something like that, 380 maybe at this sort of point so having that extra 40 pen is great like say for having to go against stuff like the fe 4211s and yeah you can use like i said the he is devastating if you use it against the right targets and your dpm goes through the roof when you're using those 590 alpha rounds because 250 pen is great 250 pen is going to go through so many tanks as long as you're not hitting the spaced armor and if you can use it effectively and no it's just general knowledge to be honest with you it's it's knowledge of what you're shooting at and where you're going to pen them planning where you're going to shoot someone and making sure that you've got the ability to do it and obviously having the ammo swapper also helps you with this tank because if you get to the point where you can't shoot them with a hg you can just press a and switch to the standard round so we're on the second game of the day and we are on great wall and oh, how did that miss okay Wrong Great Wall. We've managed to get a shot into the WZ-122 so far. That doesn't pen somehow. Okay, I'm not sure how. We don't want this guy to live because naturally he's got a good gun and he's got 80 GMs. We don't want him to do that because that wouldn't be good. He He's gone now though, so that's great. We've got a Magak 3 in front of us, which is 
basically an M48 with some slightly better armor. Now there's a Centurion in front of us. Again, that's a Hesh or a Hep target. It's not Hesh, it's Hep. And we slam that straight through that guy's upper plate. We managed to bounce a shot on a turret there, which is nice. We switch back to the HE because we can go straight through that guy's upper plate again. But unfortunately, that's the one thing you do have to note with this tank is that the HE doesn't have that good velocity compared to your AP... FSDS. So just be aware that when you do switch to the HE, you have to give a lot more lead to be able to use it. Now, unfortunately, we bounced on the Type 82's upper plate there as he was coming over the ridge line. Just bad timing because we were trying to finish off the Centurion. Again, the switching round choices there because I was going to try and slam a HE round through that guy's lower plate. But we go back to the APCR. This guy YOLOs in and rams us for quite a lot. And he is face hooking us, which is not ideal. But we do, I, I don't quite get why that guy did that, because we still have loads of team here. And my team basically ripped him apart. And fortunately enough for me, we managed to survive that encounter. We're still 787 hit points, which means we can at least take another hit before we have to be extremely cautious and, you know, the, the point where someone will kill us. We're at 4.5k damage with 400 assistance. So we're having a pretty decent game so far. There's a Leopard 1A1 there, which unfortunately just bounced off his turret. Sad times. It is a Leopard 1A1. It's still paper, but unfortunately we just ricochet. Looking for the shots into that guy. Because our team is pushing around behind, they are starting to be distracted. Again, we ricochet off the side of that guy's turret. I'm not quite sure how that happened again. The Scorpion 90 comes in. We managed to slap a shot into his side, which puts him in, onto a one-shot for our whole team, which is great. And now we're going to start coming behind these guys. We we'll slap a big shot of HE again into the 1A1. Like I say, the HE is an asset for this tank. Don't ignore it. Use it. Use the ammo swap. It's good effect. And now there's the Magak 3 left on this flank, and we shut him down too. We get detected, and it's like, oh, no, what is that? Oh, Thankfully, the Object 120 doesn't pen us there, only does track damage. A HE round doesn't go in, but that could have been bad times. Now, he does have 750 Alpha, which is pro which is technically lower in Era 2 because he probably would have rolled for more like 700, but he would have put us on a one-shot, which is not what we want. And the Object 120 is pulling back, and again... It's, it's a tank with no armor, so this HE is going to rip through this guy. We'll slap a shot in for 579, and it's just nice uh, it's just the he is so nice to use on this tank it really is i cannot stress enough don't underestimate how good the he is on these m60s because naturally this gun that you're using on the m60 at the minute is the same gun that you'll use on the m60a1 and the m60a3 although on the m60a3 you've got to unlock lock it after you finish the grind which is crap but yeah you, you use the same gun all the way up the tree so Use the HE to as good effect as you can on all three of the tanks and you'll have a great time. As I say, it just improves your DPM, makes your DPM fantastic. Because it's already pretty decent and then having that 590 Alpha shell is dirty for when you're having to face Leopards, especially. Because if a Leopard comes in on you, it can be pretty bad time. But if you're starting to slam the HE into them, which they're very squishy and easy to pen, although obviously you've just seen some weird ricochets, then you're just going to put in some significant damage. So we're up to 8k damage. The M60A2 here is in the open. It's like, please give me one more shot. We managed to slap a shot into the side of him. Unfortunately enough, he gets finished off by the Magax 6B GAL. And finished the game with the epic victory. Three kills, 8.5k damage, a bit of assistance, a bit of blocks. Ace tanker, the third mark of excellence, bang on 95%. Wow. And yeah, 644 base XP. A really nice game for the M60. A tank that I felt was a little bit boring, but could be pretty decent. As long as you weren't being focused on by other tanks, essentially. Good flanker and a good spanker. That's what the M60 does. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.